Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock system let's play slash tutorial in Kerbal Space Program 1.4.3 now upgraded from 1.4.1 .1 to 1.4.3 and we begin by upgrading the VAB which I wanted to do and after picking up some contracts we now have the funds to do barely though you can see we'll end up with 129,000 funds left over but I really need to be able to use more than 30 parts so let's do this and we also have some science to spend and the science I'm gonna pick up is fuel systems which will allow us to I mean technically we could possibly have gotten by with fewer parts if I just had this fuel tank so because it's double the size of the previous fuel tanks that we've had so we cut down on part count like that but uh, so that and fuel lines I think are really helpful uh, these fuel tanks also have promise maybe we'll see but let's unlock that. We had a number of different choices. We could have gone with bigger engines. We could have structural parts I don't think we would have needed. Um, aerodynamics, obviously we're not doing any airplane stuff right now. Bigger heat shields requires bigger pods anyway. And uh, we do have a lander can here. But just using the capsule, the Mark 1 uh, command pod makes sense. Though if we wanted two people, the Mark 2 command pod is pretty darn useful. And uh, otherwise, I think overall, the, the Clampatron Docking Port Jr. is nice because you can start putting missions together that are multiple parts. But overall, I think Fuel Systems is the best bet. So anyway, let's see what I can make from this and if we can fulfill some of our missions. Alright, so here's what I've come up with and I've called it Ultimate Moon Mission because it's going to satisfy all of our current contracts. So we've got to conduct orbital surveys of the moon where we have to do a bunch of crew reports in flight above the moon and then temperature surveys of the moon where we have to do the temperature scan. We have to plant a flag on the moon. We have to rescue Rosie from orbit around the moon. And then it says walk on the surface of the moon and return to Kerbin from the surface of the moon. Now nothing says that we have to actually send the Kerbal from Kerbin to the moon to do the flag and the walking on the surface stuff or the crew reports so what we're going to do is we're going to send an empty capsule with the probodovodyne octo and rescue rosie and then rosie can do all the rest so that is the idea of course when i say ultimate moon mission it doesn't really i mean of course there are bigger moon missions that could possibly work out but the fact that we can potentially get through all of these missions all at the same time is pretty pretty good so uh, I mean we'll see how it actually works out let's discuss the actual design uh, first we have the lander on top and we've got a heat shield that has half of its ablator we've got the thermometer of course uh, solar panels communication because of course we're going to be just on the probe core for the beginning uh, parachute naturally and then we've got this sort of service module structure what this is is a spark engine and then we've got one of the FLT-100 tanks, one of these. And then a bunch of Oscar B fuel tanks strapped to the side of it in a four-way symmetry, actually. So these four are symmetrical, and then the ones with the lander legs are separately symmetrical. And the way you put them on, by the way, if you don't know, these Oscar B fuel tanks uh, are surface attachable. I've got on uh, the other kind of symmetry here. Oh, by the way, you press R to change between mirror symmetry, which is like this, and radial symmetry which is like that and you might notice that the antennae here are placed in mirror symmetry because I didn't want three of them uh, so basically they're three-way balanced with the thermometer sort of but anyway uh, if you want to place them like I've done down there you'll note they go like this naturally and then you just press uh, D or A uh, to put them like that you could pull them out a little bit more than I have if you want to be more legit about it because they're sort of clipping into uh, that tank. Um, we can And F to change between local and global directions. And we can just tuck them out. That will incur a bit more drag, but I don't think it's going to be too much. Said that before though, but we've got countermeasures to make sure we don't flip or anything at least. Okay, so that on its own has 2,537 meters per second. Still not above the what we would like as the limit for this engine. This engine has an ISP of 
320 in vacuum, which means that the limit ought to be about 3,200 if we're doing proper staging, though, of course, we've already seen that um, ideal staging hardly ever happens <laughs> for cost reasons, for just uh, part count reasons, and all sorts of other reasons. Um, here I've uh, taken advantage of my part count, uh, increased part count limit now to add some more Oscar B fuel tanks here because this stage otherwise didn't have enough. Let's take a look at that. So this is an LV-909. Without these four weird sort of Oscar B fuel tanks on the side here, it's got 1,226, so I just wanted a little bit more margin on that. And since we already had the Oscar B fuel tanks on top, I figured they'd be aerodynamically shielded in theory, so I just went with that. Okay, and then we've got this, and even though technically, oh, the fuel lines decided not to attach properly. I, technically, I don't think you even need fuel lines these days. Uh, you could go enable crossfeed on here and that work, but uh, these engines wouldn't go out. They'd start draining the center tank, and I just want to have the fuel lines um, direct the flow in one direction. So the fuel lines have little arrows on them. If you just enable crossfeed, that means it could go both ways. But I only want it to go one way, and that's from the outer boosters, if you will, uh, to the inner engine there. And so all five engines at the bottom are swivels. They'll all be running at the same time on launch to give us enough thrust to weight ratio. But the outer four tanks, well, or eight tanks, however you want to look at it, the booster tanks will deplete first. These engines will go out when they deplete, and then we'll separate them off. The center engine will continue on its own. Uh, Megjeb is not showing us that right now, but basically what we've got is uh, this lower portion with the five swivel engines will get us to orbit. Uh, this stage will get us to the moon, uh, lunar orbit, and rendezvous with Rosie, and perhaps some of the other missions. And then the lander is going to land us on the moon, plant flag, get back to orbit, and then return back to Kerbin. Uh, the budget for all these things is... Uh, launch 4,000. Of course, it's only reading 3,400 meters per second, but that'll change, I think, once we get out to the launch pad. And then uh, 900 to get to the moon, 300 to make orbit around the moon. Um, and then if we take a look at how much we have left there, we've got 387 meters per second left uh, to rendezvous with Rosie, so that's plenty. And then 1,000 to land on the moon, 800 to get back to orbit around the moon, and then 300 to return back to Kerbin, which leaves us about 400 meters per second there to do the other mission stuff if we need to, like thermometer and the crew reports and everything. So there's plenty of margin on this mission, lots and lots, and there might be more than we're actually appreciating because of the fact that it's not showing the boosters separately on this stage. So let's take it outside, remembering to remove the Kerbal. Jeb wanted to sneak in. And let's see how it works. Well, bringing it out to the launch pad here, we see that actually it uh, separated out into uh, 2,366 for the booster stage and 1,842 for the core. So that's more than 4,200, which is more than we need. So good times. This probably can do much more than what we're asking it to do. Orbit info and vessel info is what we need right now. 8,000 meters per second. SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. On to the moon. Hopefully I haven't forgotten something. Power-wise, we only have the two small solar panels on the capsule, so hopefully that'll be enough. We don't anticipate having to transmit any information, and what we're collecting is just a thermometer and crew reports which wouldn't take much electric charge anyway but we're not transmitting those we'll just have Rosie grab the thermometer scans from outside now you note while the stages are draining like this that the core seems to be fairly low, right? I mean, it's fairly close to the other four, but that's because it's reading all five tanks, well, all, well, all of these tanks as its own. 
And of course the others are depleting and it's only going to be left with 2 out of 10 at the end. But once we stage those off, it'll be back to full because the two that are directly attached to it weren't depleted at all. We'll talk a bit more about fuel prioritization at some other time, but you can also make sure things work out with your fuel with fuel priority. There go the boosters as planned, and we can throttle up again. I could probably have made this mission cheaper, but considering all the missions that we are aiming to fulfill, I didn't see a particular reason to. I mean, we're gonna if we actually make it, uh, we're going to get serious funds out of this. So we might as well, you know, have all the margin that we think we might like, you know. And shut down. 92 by 71. And let's take a look at our situation for the moon. We've got 500 meters per second left in this stage. So that's quite a lot. Uh, well, we don't want to hit at that descending node anyway. In fact, we could probably have just kept burning. Oh, oh shoot. Or I might have wanted to extend the antennae first. Let's briefly take a look at where things are around the moon. First of all we've got Rosie's heap and that seems equatorial. Now the temperature scans uh, seem to be all over the place so that's going to be a little bit tricky because we're going to have to change our inclination around the moon to get to them. And also the crew reports are over here. Now that means that after we get Rosie, we're probably going to want to change to an inclination that's sort of like that. Maybe 30 degrees. And slowly adjust depending on what we want to hit. Of course, we could just go straight polar eventually and then we'd fly over everything at some point. So that too is an option. So it looks like, I think the problem is I'm misunderstanding exactly how the antennae work. Um, I think when it says 500k, it really means 500. See, uh, as far as its range to the surface locations, um, that uh, 500 kilometers doesn't mean 500 kilometers necessarily. When it comes to the range to these relay antennae, though, I think the 500 kilometers is exactly what it is. So I think that's what was getting me confused. Okay, there we have an encounter with the moon, but we would be crashing into it. Let's see, how's Rosie oriented? Let's try and add maneuver when we get into winter SOI. Okay, so we'd be only 2.5 degrees off. 1.4, 0.4. I think that's pretty good right there. And we could probably raise that periapsis somewhat. So we have hardly any relative inclination because uh, Rosie is in an equatorial orbit. It's easy to match inclinations with that unless you've done something really weird. And then as we get into orbit, we can look at the markers. And we can see right here the purple markers match. Point six kilometers so that's how we do it so what we want to make sure is first have a tangency that means especially trying to get our periapsis to touch the targets orbit at one location so here we've got the periapsis touching the targets location uh, adjust the uh, and we do that with the light blue handles and then we pull the inclination ones to try and minimize the the inclination but if that pulls our periapsis away from the target's uh, orbit, then that's not good. So we want to do that only if the periapsis remains on the target's orbit. And so we minimize it and then we get into orbit, but only so far as we arrange for a little intercept right there. So what's going to happen is we're going to get into orbit, we're going to go around once, and then we'll meet up with the target there. And then we're going to kill the rest of our relative speed, which is 105 meters per second, it says right there. So once we meet up with Rosie, we'll have 105 meters per second to burn according to this. 
and that'll be that. Okay, we are coming up on our initial correction in Mooner SOI, the Moon's Sphere of Influence. Okay, that should be good enough. And then the next burn, we make orbit. Let's take a look at our communication lines. We can see that the communication lines are going that way. So when we're at periapsis, we should still be in communication with Kerbin. We're awful close, by the way, 12 kilometers. Rosie's in a pretty tight orbit around the moon. Here, it might be good if you have MechJab to have the rendezvous window up. And so we don't have to go to the map view in order to see the closest approach distance. Okay, 500 meters, there you go. Also, our if we have communication at periapsis, we'll also have communication when we meet up with Rosie because we're meeting up with Rosie at our periapsis. Rosie is going to be doing plenty of work for us before she gets back to Kerbin. Oh, our thrust actually knocked it. Uh-oh. Um, why don't you just maintain stability? One of us has to maintain stability. Rosie, quickly. EVA. Okay. Don't get knocked by your own pod. Alright. Okay, grab and board. Alright, Rosie's in. So, yes, saved Rosie, but we haven't recovered Rosie, so it doesn't count yet. Uh, while we have 900 meters per second that we have in this stage, we should try and hit the locations we need to hit. So, uh, we're at the equator, so it, it, we can do our inclination change anytime we want, but it'd be good to do it uh, right where we're in the middle of the two sets of locations. These are in the north, these are in the south, so we want to tilt the orbit like that to hit them which means we want to do it right about here. So that's where I'm going to do the maneuver. And since these are in the north, I'm going to tilt up this way, like that. It does cost a lot, and we have to stay at a fairly low altitude to hit them. See, this one says altitude below 10 kilometers, 10.3, 8.2, 10.1, 10.5, Let's make sure our altitude stays very low. And we'll do the shallower ones first. So, I mean, the ones that are at lower inclination first, and then we'll gradually, well, yeah, I think we'll just gradually increase our inclination. It might not be the most efficient way to go, but it is the way I'm going to go. So first, let's see, I don't know if we can hit that one necessarily on this belt. Uh, we probably don't want to be suborbital though close, frankly. Okay, so this will work out, hopefully. In order to hit these, all the maneuvers, we're going to do our inclination maneuvers, and it might be more efficient to boost out first and then tilt your orbit, especially if you want to get into a polar orbit, which might be easier in ways. Right now, I'm doing it the lazy way, but I've got a lot of fuel to work with. Remember, inclination changes are easier the higher up you are, and we're about as low around the moon as we can get. So this is the worst it can be. Okay. Okay, entering the sector. We have to do a thermometer scan. Okay. So we, we got the survey data, and yeah, it doesn't require us to transmit it, actually. Okay, so we got that one. You don't get any science for it though. Okay, but we definitely need to boost up our orbit now. And next up, we, we want to get that one in that crater. So over here, where our orbit once again crosses the equator. Uh, oh, control locked. Looks like our core still requires communication even though we have a Kerbal in. It's weird that I can't add a maneuver node when... I mean, we have a Kerbal. But I mean, it, does it require a pilot in order to make a maneuver node? It's weird. So we need to go further south. But we also need to pull our orbit in because... Uh, wait, 
what does it say, above 8.8. So we don't need to be that low. On the southern ones, we can be higher. OK, entering the zone. Crew report is just inside a capsule, so crew report. OK, we got that. Why don't we have Rosie EVA, just in case we can do an EVA report here? Nope, it's not worth anything. We've already done the East Crater. OK, forward. All right, that one done. And again, we aim for the equator in order to make the next correction. As long as it's inclination, you do it at the equator. And let's bring that down there. And that one's 10 kilometers, so we need to be a little bit lower. That'll do. That periapsis is pretty much right there. It says 9.5 kilometers. And all the way, I'm thinking about my budget. So we can see on the last burn, we did 79 meters per second. This time, we're doing another 79 meters per second. We've got 644, and we've got five locations total left. So I figure we've got enough. If we need to use some of the lander fuel, we can. In fact, we can even land at one of these locations as long as we're in communication range. So probably it'll have to be one of those. OK, we are entering the sector. And we need a thermometer reading. OK, we've collected the survey data. No additional science, but check mark on that. OK. So again, if you go into a polar orbit, you won't have to constantly do all these minor burns here and there at the equator each time. But you're going to have to wait for the moon to rotate so that the locations are underneath your orbit. Unless you do other kinds of minor adjustments. We are very close to the ground. I don't think there's any feature of the moon that's higher than around 5 kilometers, so 6 kilometers. But we're pretty much as close as I want to be. Without landing, of course. Okay, entering the sector. And log temperature, and that's done. Okay, just one more in that part. And two more crew reports. Ooh, it's, it's sort of deviated from where I wanted it to be. I think we'll still fly over it, though. Or at least close enough, judging from the margins on the previous times. Needs us to be below 8.2 kilometers, though, and we're getting a bit high. We have to go for a crash course again, and, you know, while we're at it, let's incline a bit more. I'm tempted to say that maybe we should just come in for a landing here now. We've already got such a descent path. Okay, we're entering the zone, and but we're not low enough. Okay, now we are. Oh, we're leaving. Oh, shucks. Dang it. So close. Yeah, it doesn't count. Okay, well, I think we're going to land here. <laughs> um, or not. Because uh, we don't have SAS. And I could... I can control it manually, just so that we don't get into any smart ASS GT mode situations. Okay. So now, we're on this bit. Um, let's see. I would rather land in a location where we have communications, so... Probably, maybe in that crater. We haven't planted a flag in that crater, right? We haven't planted a flag at all. So, yep, that crater. Yeah, so one of the features of the lander is that it's got a very wide base to it. 
And I haven't obvi I haven't always been good about making my landers tip-proof, if you will. I wouldn't say that it is completely tip-proof, but it's better than normal. And I guess the best rule of thumb for making it tip-safe is measure the distance between the center of mass, which happens to be right around here. Uh, I know from the v VAB. Center of mass is right here. The distance from the center of mass to the ground. Make sure your base, the distance between the legs, is wider than that. That'd be the first thing. Okay, so then the second thing for landing is, once you've decided on a landing location, it's just sort of a rule of thumb thing depending on how much thrust you have. The higher the thrust, the quicker you can make your landing. But you do have to decelerate 500 odd meters per second. And if you take a look at your delta V stats. Here I've got 5 minutes and 30 seconds of stage time, but that's 2,500 meters per second. So I could probably burn this off in maybe a minute and 20 seconds, a minute 30 seconds, because you get less delta V initially than you do with the last ton of fuel. So maybe a minute 20, minute 30. Well, I can click my orbit here and I can see right there a minute and 36 seconds. Well, seems to me like that means I should be retroburning right about now. So, surface negative relative velocity. And we still don't have SAS. I could hold it there manually. It's just a matter of annoyance. So now we are decelerating. Good to have surface info up. Next little tidbit. Uh, you would want to be lower than we are right now. We are pretty high and we're going to waste some fuel just sort of going straight down instead of horizontally. Okay, now we have full communication, so SAS. Um, keep your vertical speed, keep an eye on your vertical speed, make sure it's not going down too fast. So because we were on this very high pass, we're going to end up having a very steep arc, which means that we're going to be going basically straight down at some point, which is not the most efficient thing. But it might be safer for you if you're just starting out. It'll also be easier to ensure that you're landing in the right location. See, we wanted to land there, and if we're going straight down over it, we're not going to miss it. If you wanted to get into a polar orbit one, and you still needed to land on the surface at some point, one strategy would be to land first and then just launch into a polar orbit. Okay, my vertical speed is fairly high now, very obviously. And so we're going to point at the retrograde surface retrograde vector and moderate that just a little bit to make sure I have enough time. This wastes fuel. But it also allows you to get a feel for how quickly you can kill the vertical speed to make it reach zero. So. I've got a sense of how much thrust I have and how long it'll take me to bring that number down to zero. So here I've decided to start retro burning right now and that was based on how I felt it was accelerating earlier. But to some extent this is a thing you're going to have to feel out. Note the true altitude there. That's an important number. Now if you don't have MechJeb, you can get that number from inside the cockpit. And we can take a look at that in a bit after I actually land. Here I'm keeping the vertical speed to one-tenth of the altitude. So you can see the first two numbers are matching, sort of. That's what I often do. Also, make sure that you're not going too horizontal, otherwise you will tip over. Okay, and there we go. So, the surface horizontal speed is an important piece of information. You don't want to be going too horizontal. 
uh, even 0.2 meters per second is a lot if you've got a tall lander. And yeah, vertical speed, one tenth of the altitude is what I usually aim for. Inside the cockpit, uh, you'll note that there is a radar altitude reading here, which we, which is basically the same as our true altitude that we have here. And that's the altitude over the surface. Otherwise, the altitude that it indicates up, uh, whoop, up at the top there is from a datum. It's not really sea level on the moon because there's no sea per se, but um, it is a sort of reference altitude that it's reading from. Anyway, so we're on the moon. So we need to walk on the surface. and plant a flag. So I don't know if we can plant a flag. I hope they gave us that mission knowing that we could do it. I didn't put a ladder on here. It occurs to me now. Yes, we can plant a flag. So they didn't, that, that wasn't them trying to dupe us or anything. Okay, plant a flag. Okay, so Rosie on the moon. Wait, I just got rescued. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Okay, all right. And why don't you do an EVA report? Yes, keep that. I'll probably have to do a crew report as well. Oh, uh, no, grab properly. Oh, the climb thing is always weird. Okay, I have to make sure. Another thing that can happen is your Kerbal decides to knock over the capsule. That's not good. That's never fun. Okay. Crew report. Keep. Temperature scan. Keep. And Rosie needs to EVA. Take data. Take data and then board. All right. I think we've done all the things we want to do here. And let's see. Planet flag on moon is fulfilled. Walking on the surface. Yep. All right. So let's try and get those two other crew reports and that temperature scan. And then, but we have to reserve enough fuel to make it back home. That's the most important thing now. So if we can't get those those other uh, pieces of information, we can do that on a different mission. Now we need to get Rosie back as the priority. But yep, yeah, all right. The thing is, we need to keep in mind where we want to go as far as inclination. And activate navigation isn't going to help us too much. We clearly, from this location, want to head south and it's going to be pretty darn far south in order to hit those. We're looking at going down this way and then going back up to get those and then going up and over to get that one. So that angle seems to be 135 degrees let's say. Let's, let's aim for that first. So we're hitting 135. I should have just landed at the location when we were trying to make the temperature reading and missed. We could have just landed there. That would have saved a bit of fuel. Okay, well that's higher than I wanted it to be. Let's see. Uh, we should be able to hit both of those, I think. Above 11 kilometers. Uh, we probably will be. I think. Because our periapsis is over here and apoapsis is over there. Oh, we're way too high for that temperature scan there. Okay, well anyway, we are in orbit and we can proceed. We've got 1,000 meters per second here. We need 300 to get back home is what I'm estimating. Let's say, just to be perfectly safe, 400.
entering Valentina's Voyage. That's a good name. And Tamini's Odyssey. Okay, quickly, crew report. Okay, we got both of them. Right? Yep, we've done all the observational surveys. So crew reports are done. We just need that one temperature scan. Okay, so at the equator, going to reduce our inclination to hit that one. But look at how our orbit is going, because when you do this burn, you add energy into the orbit, and so it increases the orbital size. We don't want that, so we actually have to do even more burning to bring it back down again. Okay, that's 8 kilometers. Let's so prograde in preparation for boosting ourselves up again. Okay, entering the sector. Do the reading. And that's done. Boost up. Um, you know, that's not quite the angle I want. Okay, that should be safe. We've done all the things. Now we really just need to... Recover Rosie. <laughs> That's it. That's all we have to do. Okay, that'll do. So not too much of a problem. We'll end up with about 500 meters per second to spare. Okay, uh, 25 kilometers should be fine. All right. We are on our way. Okay, right around here. Point normal and we're going to separate the service module off now it's conceivable that we could actually keep it on and it'll be all right but let's let's not ch challenge the game in any way when we're this close to success okay ablator is already ablating okay we're through the worst of it We have communication. We have, there's an island communication location right there. So we're very close to that. Activating the parachute at 260 meters per second is fine. And we hardly used a third of our ablator. Basically a third of our ablator. And splash down. All right, recover vessel. So, there you have it. We finished all five missions on the same mission. And we've got some science data. Not, not as much as we could have had if we had more scientific instruments. And judging from the 500 meters per second we had left at the end, maybe we should have carried a few, like a goo container or two for the surface and all, I know. But 7 XP gain for Rosie. Um, she was already at level 1. We saw her at level 1. Anyway. Uh, we didn't get very many funds back for the recovered parts, but we've gone from being an impoverished space program to having 800,000. We started off uh, the episode after upgrading the VAB and getting, uh, uh, that was the actually only, only cost, but uh, we had 120,000 after upgrading the VAB, so now we're much better off. And next time, well, they, they're still giving us a lot of moon contracts. There is an Explore Minmus contract. Rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Minmus. You know, maybe that's an interesting thing to do. But we've talked about rendezvous before. I feel like we really need to think about interplanetary, talk about how to do interplanetary trips. I'll think about what we're going to cover next. But anyway, for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.